One of the most common comments I get in all my videos is what are those type hints or why do I have a string next to this text over here? Why do I do that? And then I also get quite a lot of comments with the people who do use this having a really big misconception on what it actually does. So in this video, I want to go over one of the biggest misconceptions that people have with type hints. And in case you don't know what type hints are, this video will show you very briefly how they actually work. So one of the first things I want to mention is that you can either call this a type hint or a type annotation, and it's going to mean the same thing in terms of Python, just in case you hear both of those terms being used around in the community. Now, for every single object in Python, you have the option to give it a type annotation, and that just tells the code editor that you want to make sure that this is a string. So for example, if we type in string here, it's going to work perfectly fine. But if we type in something such as 100, we're going to get this yellow syntax highlighting warning us that we meant to put a string there. So this can be considered a great win in terms of readability when you are programming in Python. It really makes it explicit what kind of variable you have and what type it should actually be. And this also works with classes. So if you have a class called fruit, for example, and it has an initializer, you bastard. Who wants an int as an initializer? So you have an initializer and all it does is print hello. You can now use this fruit as a type annotation. So for example, if you create a new object and you call it, let's say, banana, you can say that this is of type fruit, and then you can create that fruit. And that just makes it explicit that we have a fruit here. Now, one of the greatest places to use it is in the parameter section when you're creating a function. So if you type in, let's say, some random function and it has a parameter, and you want this to be a list of type string, for example, the benefit of giving it that type hint is that now when we type in parameter, we get all of these context options, which really helps us out as a developer when we're working in some sort of IDE. You'll notice that without the type hint, you're going to have to do your best job to type it in manually because most code editors are not going to help you with that if they do not know what the type is. So the parameter is going to take this list of type string and it's just going to reverse that list and then we're going to return the parameter. So it's just going to reverse whatever list we give it. And you can also define a return type. So here you can type in list of type string if you want to be explicit that this should return a string. So if we do some monkey business inside here and accidentally return an integer, we're going to get this yellow syntax highlighting warning us that we're not returning the type that we wanted to return. So that was the basic concept behind using type hints in Python. Now, the biggest misconceptions we have about type hints is that it speeds up our program. And this is absolutely false. It does not speed up our program in any notable way, especially since the Python interpreter ignores these. And that means that no type checking is occurring at runtime. Here, if you decide to add an integer and you say text again of type Boolean and you type in text, or we can just change this to Boolean, for example, there's nothing stopping you from doing this. And if you print both of these, you print text and you print the Boolean, the program is still going to run. It's not going to care that you put the wrong data types. It's just a mental note, in other words, that gives you extra context options in certain scenarios, but it does not speed up your program in any notable way. So it's not a premature optimization that you should be focused on. I like to use it as much as possible because it really reminds me what I'm trying to do in my code. And if I create a fruit and I create a function that uses that fruit, I want to know what I'm getting back from the function. As obvious as some code might sound, for me, adding type hints just feels right. I mean, there are some scenarios you might want to ignore it, especially if the data type isn't really that easy to associate with the variable. There are some scenarios where I skip on it, but for the majority of cases, I will always use type hints because I personally love it. It doesn't speed up your code in any significant way, but it can enhance the readability of your code and prevent you from making some very silly mistakes early on in your program if you're using an IDE that can spot this. In a normal text editor, you will not get any syntax highlighting, so that's absolutely up to you whether you use type hinting or not. 
Well, that being said, I'm very curious to hear your opinion on type hints. Do leave it in the comment section down below. It's very easy for me to miss important points when I'm recording these. So I really love to read your comments and I highly appreciate anything that's informative and backed by documentation. But anyways, with all that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.